Hi everyone. In this talk, I will be presenting an anomaly detection framework for diffusion MRI tractometry. Most clinical diffusion MRI studies rely on the statistical comparison between large groups of patients against healthy control to study disease. However, rare cases in clinical heterogeneity can greatly challenge the discriminative power of these studies. For example, if groups are too heterogeneous, then it can be a challenging, challenging task to classify subjects using supervised learning approaches. Unsupervised techniques like autoencoders have great potential to detect anomalies in neuroimaging data using the so-called one-class classification. Here we present an anomaly detection framework to push diffusion MRI tractometry towards single subject analysis. This is done by profiling microstructural properties along the manifold of white matter pathways and by learning a set of normative microstructural features to better discriminate patients from controls. Diffusion MRI data were acquired from 90 typically developing children and 8 children with a CNV at high genetic risk of neurodevelopmental disorder using a 3D connectome MRI scanner. Automated white matter tract segmentation was performed using TrackSeg. Tractometry was done by profiling DTI-based metrics such as FA and MD, as well as rich features along the bundles. The resulting tract profiles were concatenated to form a feature vector. Here, we trained the deep autoencoder to learn what healthy microstructural properties look like by minimizing the reconstruction error. Then, given the new input, we can use a reconstruction error as a distance metric that quantifies the degree of deviation of that subject with respect to the group representation. Since we want to train on healthy controls data only, a bootstrap approach was implemented to draw random samples of equal sizes to each group to form the validation set. The rest of the healthy controls data was used to establish a normative distribution. The mean absolute error was derived by computing the absolute difference between the reconstructed microstructural features and the raw input features of the autoencoder. To derive conservative estimates and assess variation within the model, we repeated the process a hundred times. We then compared our implementation with the traditional z-score approach as well as with the multivariate PCE approach combined with the Mahalanubis distance. For all four microstructural metrics, the autoencoder approach was better at identifying CNV subjects as outliers, providing higher sensitivity specificity trade-offs. In particular, the risk zero feature showed a higher discriminating power with an area under the curve of 0.86 compared with the mean univariate z-score and the multivariate PCA approach. This could potentially be explained by the framework's ability to handle high-dimensional data non-linearly. A closer look into the anomaly scores showed that most of them occurred along the inferior longitudinal fasciculus in the optic radiations, which are two association bundles that run into the temporal occipital lobes. A key advantage of using deep autoencoders for anomaly detection over traditional PCA-based approaches is their unique ability to interpret anomaly scores based on feature inspection. Here, if we look at a typically developing subject, the overall reconstructed features matches very well the input. In the CNV subject, we see various discrepancies highlighted along multiple tracks. Those were assessed using a permutation approach. The difference between the two can then be further interpreted in the context of tissue microstructure. Now to conclude, our tractometry-based anomaly detection framework is a first step towards personalized approaches by transitioning away from the traditional group-based comparison of patients against controls. If you want to know more about the technique, please make sure to check out our short paper. Thank you for listening.